well, I risked it and it hasn't paid off. Hello and welcome to a shot of wildlife. This morning I'm at RSPB Strumpshaw Fen and hopefully we're gonna see some wildlife. As you can tell, I've only just got here. I am actually the only person here, which is either a good sign or a bad sign. But as soon as I get my wellies on, we got onto the reserve proper and see what wildlife we can find. Let's get going. Strumpshaw Fen is a large area of wet woodland, grazing marsh and reed beds to the east of Norwich in Norfolk. It's always quite good for birds and after a short walk from the car park, I stopped at what has to be the most popular bird feeders I've ever seen. Although maybe this time I'd spoken too soon as this sunflower heart feeder was completely empty. But the nearby peanut feeder was as busy as usual. Here's a blue tit, a long-tailed tit, and a male great tit. You can tell this one is a male from the thickness of the dark line running down his belly. As I made my way towards the reception hide, I got my first glimpse of one of several freshwater pools at Strumpshaw. There didn't seem to be much going on at first, but I soon noticed several marsh harriers emerging from their overnight roosts among the reeds. In the past, I have seen more than 10 of these once extremely rare birds from just this one spot. These days, I rarely get out of the city without seeing at least a couple of them. As the Harriers moved out of sight, I noticed there was some other life out on the water, but it was quite far away. A pair of mute swans and a pair of Eurasian coots. Although it is still winter, a lot of wetland birds have already paired up and began claiming territories. I carried on into the reserve but didn't make it very far before I was distracted by a non-natural tapping sound. It turns out that this great tit had seen himself in a tractor's mirror and decided to pick a fight. I guess he really is his own worst enemy. I then caught a couple of shots of this grey squirrel before continuing along the track. Female pheasants have really good camouflage, but with their bright green and red faces, males do not. Although this one, which was sat next to the path up ahead, didn't seem to know that, until I got a little too close and he made a dash for it. Whilst waiting for him to come back out, I noticed a smaller bird on the path, a beautiful male chaffinch. Females of this species are also more drably coloured, but don't worry, I plan on doing a fact file about them soon, so stay tuned for that if you want to know more. I left the chaffinch to his morning food and started down the woodland trail. It was great to be the only person about. I know from previous experience that there can be a lot of wildlife in these woods. It didn't take long for me to see and film the next animal, another male pheasant. And it wasn't the only non-native animal skulking through the undergrowth, as nearby was this female muntjac. They are the smallest species of deer that lives in the UK, and have been here since 1838, when they were introduced to Woburn Park in Bedfordshire. As I tried to get a better view of it, I caught a glimpse of something much more exciting. Did you see it? Here it is again in slow motion. With its dark tipped tail, this is a stoat and it's the first time that I've ever managed to catch one on film. I think that's probably worth a BAFTA or at least Wildlife Film of the Year award. As quickly as it appeared, it disappeared once more so I carried on walking. 
Well, I'm so glad I came. I very almost stayed in bed this morning. It's about three degrees, my hands are frozen, but I've already seen so many different species which I get to share with you. And I haven't even made it into the marshlands and the reed beds, which this place is pretty famous for. So I'm gonna carry on down this track now, and soon it will come to a bit of my open area, and hopefully we'll see some things, perhaps some Chinese water deer, and maybe even some wetland birds. As the track continued, the woodlands began to give way to open grazing marsh, but in the last patch of trees, there was one more surprise. High in the branches of a dead standing tree was this great spotted woodpecker drumming the wood to mark his territory. Surprisingly, both the males and the females would drum wood like this, but I can just about make out the red patch on the back of this bird's head, making it a male. Great spotted woodpeckers have favourite drumming posts, and this must have been one of his, as he stayed there for the whole time I was watching, and later on, in a hide, somebody showed me a photograph that they had taken the day before of it in exactly the same place. I left him to his drumming and carried on into some flat Norfolk countryside, but the weather had started to take a bit of a turn. Well, I've just made it to the pump house where Strumpshaw Fen meets with the river Yare. And as you can probably hear, it is getting very windy. The sky's gone grey, very grey. It isn't meant to rain, but the next hide is miles away. So I think I might be in for a soaking. There is actually a bit of shelter at the pumping station, but I decided to risk it and push on to the next hide. Well, I risked it and it hasn't paid off. It's starting to proper chuck it down. My camera isn't waterproof, so I'm gonna have to sort of do this weird sort of jog without falling over because I'm trying to film it and be clever and then get to the next hide really quickly before my camera gets ruined. Well, I made it and I didn't get too wet. There's a little bit of water on me and I'm pretty sure my camera survived. When I first got here, there was a couple of other people in the hide and I was too embarrassed to talk to the camera. Um, plus I was out of breath running wellies with this bit of winter timber on me is not good fun. Anyway, there's quite a bit of wildlife out here. So let me show you some closer looks at them. I filmed this just after I arrived at the hide when the rain was still lashing down but this pair of coots did not seem to mind. They spend a lot of their time below the water's surface, looking for invertebrates, crustaceans, and weed to eat, so a bit of rain didn't phase them at all. This little grebe is also an expert diver and swimmer, but it didn't seem too keen on the deluge and soon disappeared back among the reeds. This grey heron had a different approach, just standing there, looking miserable and dreaming of better days. And as the rain eased up, this pair of grey lag geese just carried on with their day. I saw quite a few pairs on this walk, but most of them were flying past noisily. Grey lags usually mate for life, and as they have a life expectancy of 8 to 14 years, this pair may have nested many times before perhaps even here at Strumpshaw. Just as I was about to leave the hide, I noticed one last creature emerging from the reeds, this time on the land. This footage isn't the best, but I wanted to show you, as when I zoom in on this frame, you can see what makes Chinese water deer fairly unique. The large tusks that males have protruding over their bottom lips. There's been a bit of a break in the weather, so I'm gonna to try to get round to the next hide, which is Tower Hide. And if it rains and I get stuck there for a little while, I don't really mind because there's always plenty of things to see. I didn't see anything on the way to Tower Hide, which is no surprise, as most of the time I was looking at the ground and trying not to slip over on the recently flooded pathway.
So I'm up in Tower Hyde now, and currently I am the only person in here, so I don't have to feel embarrassed about speaking to the camera. Um, straight away I can see there's lots of different types of ducks and geese out there, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. But first off, just have a look at how beautiful this view is. It didn't take long before my eyes and lens was drawn away from the scenery to this marsh harrier cruising above the reeds. It wasn't alone, and although the light didn't allow me to confirm it, I suspect that this is a pair, as one did pass food to the other whilst I wasn't filming. Marsh harriers often have more than one mate, with some males having up to three different partners within their territories. Out on the water, there are only a couple of species of waterfowl. In the past, I have seen eight different species at one time, but I think the wind had kept most of them away from the main bodies of water, leaving just grey lag geese and shell ducks. These shell ducks seem to be preparing for the spring, with the males showing their head flicking courtship display to try to win a mate and to oppose other males. But when that wasn't enough, the occasional scuffle did break out, but nothing too serious. Shell ducks often nest down old rabbit burrows, and I would love to find one later this year and film as the chicks emerge. The grey lag geese here weren't as territorial as the others I'd seen earlier, and were mainly just sheltering in the least windy spots of the pool. As I left the hide and made my way back towards the car park, I noticed this robin acting a bit suspicious near to the path. It didn't seem very interested in me, and as I approached, it flew down to the path in front of me, and I realised what it was doing. Can you see what's happening here? Look closely, you can see that a mole is just below the ground and has chased a couple of worms to the surface. The robin is claiming the easy pickings. By the time I'd got my proper camera in position, the mole had gone back below the surface. So here is an inanimate pile of dirt. I carried on down the pathway, and after clearing the mud cakes from my wellies, I was almost back at the car park when Stromschel had one last surprise for me. Among some brambles, I could see that a pair of long-tailed tits had started to build a nest. The nest is made out of spider webs, moss and lichen, which means it can expand as the chicks grow inside. I didn't want to interrupt them, and I made my way back to the car. And that's where today's video comes to an end. But don't worry, if you want to see more British wildlife, then check out this video here, or I took a trip to RSPB Minsmere. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm trying to talk, mate. Thank you. Um, so I'm up in. <laughs>